Hello again to the solution of exercise 6, problem sheet 2. Here we are investigating the most general three element group. We call it G3. And we want to see how this group behaves and maybe find a uh, geometric interpretation of this group. First of all, if we don't know anything about this group, I already told you it's a good approach to write down the character table of this group and to see if we can recognize anything special about it. The first row and the first column is given. Then we have here we have c squared, here we have c to the minus 1 squared, and here we have identity on identity. In order to be a g3 being a group, c squared must be equal to c to the minus 1, and c to the minus 1 squared must be equal to c. Now we can recognize this being the rotation group C3, because C3 behaves exactly equivalent. Here we have C3, C3 squared, E, C3, C3 squared. I copy from over here. And then I already told you we recognize here C3 squared, identity. And here we recognize C3. What what did we recognize right here? We recognized c3 squared is equal to c3 times c3. And then we furthermore we recognize c3 squared times c3 is equal to the identity. Therefore we have found the generator of our cyclic group right here. And we see that every element in this group can be generated out of c3. And with uh, problem 3a of exercise sheet 1, we see that it's also abelian. In order to find its irreducible representations, we have to construct the character table of our group C3. Because it's abelian and because we have no inversion element, uh, all elements belong to different conjugacy classes. Therefore, we have three irreducible representations, all with dimension 1. We have the identity representation, and then we have here a variable occurring. In fact, we have two variables occurring. We call it omega and omega squared. And we have to have omega plus omega squared being equal to minus 1 in order to fulfill row and column orthogonality. So what is this omega occurring right here? We already investigated a cyclic group in exercise uh, sheet 1 and we visualized it by, uh, by seeing the rotations in a, as a rotations in the complex plane in the unit circle. So if we have the real axis here, the imaginary axis here, then our identity element lies right here. C3 is here and C3 squared is over there. Now, taking this visual approach, we see that omega right here, this omega, is exactly equal to e to the 2 pi i over 3. And we see that this omega fulfills this relation right here, and therefore it's the correct, correct omega to insert right here. In the next step, we want to find a two-dimensional representation of this group C3. We already did that. As you might remember in exercise 2 of problem set 1, we found a representation gamma which gives the identity representation the square one, uh, the square matrix with ones on the diagonal and the C3 we found to be, we've got that thing going on with the uh, square root of 3, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, here we have a minus 1 half. We already solved this in exercise 2. If you don't remember it correctly, please go back and have a look at it. It's not very difficult, It's you can see this from a geometric approach if you just write down how the 
how our symmetry transformations transform an arbitrary vector. Now you see, well, this is our new representation, gamma prime. And if you write down the character of gamma prime, then we have the character gamma prime of gamma prime of the identity element is 2. The character in the representation gamma prime of C3 is equal to minus 1. And the character of gamma prime of C3 squared is equal to minus 1 as well. Now we look back at our character table over here and we recognize that this is exactly gamma prime being gamma 1 plus gamma 2 because again we have here omega plus omega squared is equal to minus 1. The next thing we want to do is generalize this for an arbitrary n. We want to we want to generalize our result for having a group Cn, which is an n, which, which contains n-fold rotations around a single axis. Again, we have our complex plane, we have our unit circle, here we have our identity element. And now we have Cn elements sitting right here. Cn, Cn squared, Cn to the n minus 1, and so on and so forth. If you look at this angle, we can see that this omega n is equal to e to the 2 pi i over n. Then we look back at our character table over here. We know that if we have a character table for our group Cn, we have for every element a different conjugacy class to the 1 up until Cn to the n minus 1. And here we have our gammas. We have gamma 0, we have again n irreducible representations, all with a dimension of 1, gamma 1, then we have a gamma j representation up to a gamma n minus 1 representation. This is, of course, the identity representations. All of these have dimension of 1, so this can be seen as given. Now I would like to invite you to have a look at the proof of exercise 7 of this exact problem sheet and, and look at that lemma we used to, uh, um, to derive that result. And we see that we have, we have here roots of the unity sitting right here. And we want to combine these roots of unity satisfying row and column orthogonality. And the system how to do this is indicated right here, although we have one more index. And using this m one more index, we can conclude how to fill out this character table. We need n time a natural number of powers of omega n in every row or every column in order to fulfill the orthogonality theorem. So we begin by filling out here omega n to the 1, to the 1, up until here we have omega n to the n minus 1 to the 1. So which one, which power is which? This one is this one and this one. This one is this and this n minus 1 is this n minus 1. And this n comes from the order of the group which we derived right here. If we generalize this for the j irreducible representation we have omega n to the j to the 1 until omega n uh, no, here we have a 1, here we have the j, I'm sorry, n minus 1 to the j or for the n minus 1 representation we have omega n to the 1 to the n minus 1 until omega n to the n minus 1 to the n minus 1. What is this right here? This right here is the character table for every cyclic group of order n. So you can generalize it by taking n equal 1, n equal 2, up until n equal, I don't know. Remember, we derive this result by taking the visual approach and looking at the uh, representation of taking these rotations in the complex plane, deriving the angle as being a 
being a representation of it and then generalizing it to a n element group and we use this omega n we derive from over there in order to construct this character table right here. This over here is nothing else than taking the result of exercise 2 of problem set 1 and computing the characters. Once you have the characters you look back at this character table and conclude that our new representation, our two-dimensional representation, has a decomposition of gamma 1 and gamma 2. Thank you for watching. See you next time.